just absolutely have to be ecstatic about Tyrese Maxey and the the what he's doing right now to yeah, it's the San Antonio Spurs, but to put the team on his back like that, that's number one option stuff. That's not Embiid's sidekick. That's not a fringe all-star. What Tyrese Maxey did tonight in this game was superstar level stuff. Superstar level stuff to put this NBA team on his back and carry them through double overtime, dropping 52 points and make sure his team got the win. And, you know, he wasn't shooting the ball great the whole game. The first half, he was one for seven from three, I think. He did not have good numbers efficiency-wise in the first half of this game. He ended up finishing the game 19 for 41. Um, So that's not terrible. But he was two for 10 from three. But again, this is why... I really don't ever look at advanced analytics. This is why I don't really look at efficiency numbers. I look at the the game from start to finish and who won the game. For me, this is what Allen Iverson used to do with those Sixers teams in the early 2000s. It was the Allen Iverson show from start to finish, not because he was a selfish player, because there wasn't anybody else that could put the ball in the hoop. That's exactly what you saw with Tyrese Maxey tonight. And some people are going to look at 41 field goal attempts in today's NBA fan base and say, find a way to spin this into a negative. But without Tyrese Maxey putting up 41 shot attempts in this game, the Sixers lose. Without Tyrese Maxey not wavering by having a bad shooting game in the first half of the game, the Sixers win. If he would have said, I'm not shooting great and and lost his confidence and started to shy away from open shots, Sixers lose this game. But because he he had a short-term memory, it's the next play. The past doesn't exist. What happened in the first half doesn't exist. And he just said, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. That's how the Sixers won this game. And even at 23 years old on a back-to-back, I don't know how he has that energy in, in, in both overtimes. I just can't imagine the burn that my legs would feel if I was sprinting full speed, nonstop for how many minutes he play? The minutes aren't on ESPN. Either way, I don't know how he had the energy he had in, in, in the double overtimes. And you just have to credit his resiliency in this game to just attack and attack and attack and attack and attack and attack because he knew if I don't attack, we're losing this game. And I actually think that Nick Nurse probably said something to him at halftime because Tyrese in the first half of this game was trying too hard to be a point guard. He was trying too hard to get his teammates involved. He was being too unselfish. He was trying too hard to be a facilitator. And I don't know if he said this to him at halftime, but I feel like the second half, Tyrese Maxey was more of a, you know what? Everybody's throwing up bricks out here. Nobody can score. I need to put the ball in the hoop. And I think Nick might have said that at halftime. He might have said, Tyrese, I understand you're trying to get your teammates involved, but we need you to score to win this game. We need you to attack relentlessly to win this game. And he just attacked relentlessly. Uh, in the first half, there was some very questionable uh, full contact defense that wasn't being called for him, but he kept attacking. You know, So not just missing shots in the first half, not getting calls in the first half didn't prevent him from attacking in the second half either. The referees, for whatever reason, started to come around to his side later in the game in the fourth quarter and the overtimes. But he was not getting a friendly whistle the first four quarters, three and a half quarters of the game. And he just kept attacking. And uh, I mean, that's just heart. The kid has heart. The kid has heart. And he just drug the Philadelphia 76ers to victory all by himself. 
No Joel Embiid. Wemby out there doing Wemby things. And Tyrese Maxey had a superstar level performance, man. He had a superstar level performance in this game. Uh, he had a nice finish around Wemby in the third quarter. He had a ridiculous up and under finish and won late in the game. Um, what else I got on Maxi man? He attacked Wemby in the fourth quarter. I mean, he got hacked so blatantly, obviously. And I, I, I just, I don't want to be that guy. And if we lost this game, I wasn't going to blame it on officiating, even though I thought they were horrendous. But the disrespect that Tyrese Maxey is getting from NBA officials, we they're, Sixers got to do something about it. We got to send some film into the NBA front offices because the disrespect that Tyrese Maxey is getting from these officials is not right. It's flat out not right. This is a 23-year-old all-star. I'm seeing ghost calls for Zach fucking Collins. I'm seeing Zach Collins Euro down the lane, nobody touches him, and the ref's calling a foul. And I'm seeing Tyrese Maxey get hacked across both arms by Victor Wembenyama, bro. He's seven foot five. If you can't see that hack, you can't see anything. I don't understand the Tyrese Maxey no calls, but I just credit him for having the damn heart and resiliency to put the team on his back not let the officials take him out of the game, not let the not let his missed shots in the first half take him out of the game. In the third in the fourth quarter, when it really came down to it, and we looked down and out, you know, there was what, bro? There wasn't a lot a lot of time left. I think we were getting close to under a minute. And it looked like it was over. Tyrese Maxey said, Hell no, it's not over. Drive to the basket. Then he hits a three from the right wing. Then he has another drive to the basket. Four, seven straight points from Tyrese Maxey in that fourth quarter when I felt like the game was over. He just refused to quit. He refused to let the Sixers lose this game. And 15 seconds left. We're down what, bro? We're down three? And he kicks it over to Batum. Batum hits a massive three-pointer. Uh, and then we were down two. Maxie's in the backcourt. Nick Nurse draws up this ridiculous football play, gets a screen from Kelly Oubre at half court, uh, and then just backdoor cuts. Nicholas Batum, a perfect dime to get the layup for Maxie with 0.2 on the clock for to tie the game to send it to overtime. What happened in overtime, man? Nicole, uh, uh, Victor Wembanyama turned into Nikola Jokic in the first overtime. So the Sixers are like, listen, we can't stop Wemby. We can't. He's he, every time he touches the ball, he's either getting a foul call or he's or he's giving us a bucket. And honestly, Victor Wembanyama has a Joe Allen Embiid whistle as a rookie. I, it's unbelievable to me. I understand the NBA thinks he's the next face of the league, and maybe he is. And I understand he's a a major name in the game right now. I understand the level of popularity. I understand that he's from France, which the NBA, one of the NBA's goals is globalizing the sport. I understand all of it, but he's a rookie and he's getting a, a Joel Embiid whistle. I mean, he's just like kind of leaning in, barely getting touched. Whistle, 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 whistle. So we get to overtime and we say, He's either scoring or getting fouled every time. And I, 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 I felt against Wemby tonight. And that's not a discredit to him by any means. He is amazing. Somebody to be able to do the things that he does at seven foot four is absolutely ridiculous. And I felt tonight against Wemby the way that other teams feel probably playing against Joel Embiid. We got to the point where we were fighting on the other end. We were matching bucket for bucket. But we could not stop this dude. He was either getting a foul call or a bucket. It felt like every possession. And that's probably what other teams feel like playing against Joel Embiid. That's what I felt like against Wemby tonight. Um, so over time, we say, we got to make somebody else beat us. 
We, we got to double him. We got to triple him. And, and again, credit to him. Imagine a rookie uh, demanding a triple team in overtime because the team can't stop him. And it went into what? Second overtime because uh, we double teamed him again. He kicked it out to someone for three. They hit a three. We were trying to say, listen, we're going to double him. We're going to triple him. Maybe we're going to make somebody else beat us. And they kept hitting the shots. The Spurs were, were the freaking 2016 Golden State Warriors for five quarters. Finally, they came back down to earth a little bit in the second overtime. And they missed a couple of wide open threes. They ran out of gas and we put it away. The second overtime, Tyrese Maxey still cooking. You know, I don't understand how, like I said, I don't know how he had the energy in the second overtime. He didn't slow down at all. The Spurs looked like they burned out a little bit. Tyrese Maxey did not. 